My name is Raj Chako. I am a data center solutions consultant at Cisco Systems. Today I would like to give you a very brief demo of InterCloud Fabric. So I have InterCloud Fabric already installed and configured. So I have a group creator called Coke and a user called Coke as well. So I'm going to log in as a user. Once you log in as a user, you are actually greeted with a window which allows you to request VMs on the public cloud. Now this is a catalog that has been published by the admin. So you have the ability to provide a set of catalog items to your users and uh, they are able to request virtual machines uh, which will get instantiated on the public cloud. You also have the ability from this screen as a user to view your virtual resources that you have access to both in the public cloud as well as in your private cloud. So here as you can see on my Amazon web cloud I have a virtual machine that is turned off. This is because previously I had migrated this virtual machine to my private cloud. I had moved this VM. So if I click on this VM and I can click on move history and it will tell me that this VM was moved from AWS to my uh, production cluster here. The VNIC tab basically gives me the IP address of all the virtual machines on my public cloud. Uh, approvals, if I have an approval request in my chain, I would be seeing it over here. So every request that I generate as a user or as an admin is actually translated into a service request and as a user I'm able to look at my service request and examine the status of the service request and the workflow itself. There is a timestamp here that tells you when the workflow started and how long did it take. In my case obviously this took about less than 20 minutes for me to move this VM from the public cloud to the private cloud. The original request I had was to instantiate a VM on the public cloud. So I set up a request at 1351 to stand up a VM on the public cloud and about eight minutes later I had the VM stood up. So I'm going to repeat that process. So I'm going to go to catalog and I have this app server that I'm able to request. And before I do that let me show you what is on my AWS. So right now if I log into my AWS I have three instances running. Uh, this VM8 was the one that I had migrated back and it's in the stopped condition. So as you can see there are no production VMs here just a couple of management virtual machines up and running here. So I will instantiate a request. I will click next and uh, I have the ability to pick the number of CPUs and this is something that was made available by the admin. So I'm going to pick a one gig memory and one CPU here and as you can see this is the summary of the request and I will hit submit and when I click on services I can actually look at my service request now it says in progress and I can double click on it and it shows me the process of that workflow now I'm gonna log in as an admin so here I am logged in as an admin so the particular service request that was just instantiated can be viewed under organizations service requests and here it is that service request that is being executed right now as a workflow so from an admin standpoint I have a lot more visibility into the different steps that are going on. The summary of the workflow as well as when I click on the log this gives me a detailed step-by-step -step process of every single uh, item that is being constructed or, or configured uh, as part of the workflow. So here as you can see the new VM will be stood up as VM 10 and it's right now creating port profiles etc. Uh, so I'll come back here and we'll look at the uh, the workflow uh, at a later time. So a couple of quick things from this screen. I have four menu items under inner cloud tab here. Infrastructure is where I would set up my base infrastructure components. ICF cloud is where I would set up my cloud extenders. So if I were to attach myself to Amazon or Azure or um, Cisco Power Providers. Uh, this is where I would configure that. And this is based on a wizard, so I can hit setup here and I will go through the process and um, 
set up their connection. As you can see, I have created two ICF clouds to Amazon, uh, and these are the two connections. And this is why you saw those two ICS VMs when I showed you the Amazon AWS login page where I had the instances. The third item here is compute. So when I click on compute, it shows me all my private and my public clouds that I have availability here. So I have a management cluster, which is a VMware cluster. I have my production cluster. Under my management cluster, I have a handful of VMs that are listed here. And then, of course, if I click here, I will give, get a global view of all the VMs and all the, all the different elements of the entire cloud. So here I click on my VMs and you can see it shows me my management VMs, my production virtual machines, my Amazon virtual machine, which is turned off, uh, this particular one. And as you will notice in a, in a few minutes, it will spin up a new VM here. Now, I'm able to instantiate virtual machines in the public cloud really quickly in about a few minutes time frame I'm able to stand up a new VM that's because I have the ability to upload an image as a catalog item and make that image available in Amazon so when a user requests that image it actually quickly spins up a new VM based on that image that you have already uploaded to Amazon and this is why I'm able to get pretty fast virtual machines instantiated on Amazon or Azure. The last tab here is the network tab. Now, the network tab allows you to do a couple of things. It allows you to create or extend your VLANs to the public cloud. So what I would do is that I'm able to connect to my ICF VSM or virtual supervisor module and then I can add my port profiles so these port profiles are essentially the extension of my VLAN. So if I want to extend a VLAN, uh, let's say 60, uh, then I'm able to extend that VLAN to my public cloud by simply giving it a profile name and the VLAN ID. Under organizations, this is where you would look at the service requests, both that are being run as an admin or the ones that are run as a user. As you can see this request that we just had received from user Coke is complete. So if I open the workflow up I can see that the workflow is complete and the VM has been instantiated on the public cloud. Click on log and I'm able to see a detail of all the different activities that have been completed successfully. So now that this is complete, I'm able to go back and look at Amazon. And if I do a refresh here on Amazon, I should be seeing a VM 10 here. So let me click on my dashboard here, my four instances. And there is my VM. So this was the VM that the user requested. So I'm going to log in as, go back and log in as the user. And uh, this is the user. I'm going to look at my service request is obviously if I do a refresh it should say complete and if I look at my virtual resources now I have two VMs under VNIC now I know the IP address of the new VM which is 30.31 and if I click on the VM here I should be able to see that I have access to that new VM this is the public IP address of that VM and the Amazon IP address and obviously you saw the private IP address of that VM now I'll do a quick sanity check I'm able to log in to VM5. Five. So I'm going to do, I'm going to log into VM5 and I'm going to try to ping that IP address of my, the other VM that is spin up. Now the reason why I'm going to show you this is to demonstrate the fact that we indeed are extending the layer two and we have the ability to connect a VM that is on the private space now in in the public cloud. So here, ping 172.16.30.31. There it is. Now, if I if I SSH into it, I should be able to look at some interesting details. Okay, 
here I am on the public uh, on on, a, on the VM on Amazon. If I do an if config and pipe it to more, what you will see is that it has this. There are three NICs that are part of it. Of course, the loopback adapter at the bottom here, uh, and then if you look at it, there is a CSC zero adapter and an ETH zero adapter. This ETH zero is our the private adapter, the IP address that I'm that I'm pinging at or that I'm looking at. There is also this IP address. Now this is the Amazon provided private space. So what we do is that we get an agent installed, uh, we obfuscate this VM and protect this VM from external access. So all the communication from this VM is encrypted because of this agent and now we are able to directly extend our layer 2 into the public cloud. All right. So now what I will do is that I will actually try to move this VM back into my private space. So it's VM that has been spun up here on Amazon. Now I would like to make sure that this VM comes back. So I can, as a user, I can request a migrate VM to premise. Uh, and then I need to pick a destination. Uh, my destination has already been configured. I got two hosts that I can pick between in this cluster here. Uh, and I have an option of picking up the storage here. So I will hit submit and at this point what will happen is that this VM10 uh, on Amazon right here will get shut down automatically and then it will be migrated back into the private into my private space. Alright so going back to the admin screen so as an admin I have a couple of other options here now under policies I have the catalog option. As you saw, that I there was one catalog item that was made available for user Coke. So here's my group Coke, and I'm going to create one more catalog item. And I will demonstrate that real quickly here. So this catalog is going to be under Intercloud Fabric, and I'm going to call it CentOS Web Server because the previous one that we created was an app server. And here I will pick, make it available for user group Coke. Uh, and I have two clouds, I'm going to use cloud one and then I can use this existing image and this is actually a CentOS Linux uh, and now if I hit next what this is telling me is that I can have a single image and I can have different categories, app categories or you know so I have a one category would be for app or another one would be for web or database etc so my app category 0 is configured as app but since this is going to be a web server I'm going to pick category 1 and I'll make sure that this is CentOS VM and then I will hit submit. Now what would happen is that the user should now be able to see a second item in the catalog so I'm going to log back in as the user and then if I go to catalog there it is. So now I have the web server that is available. So this is how easy it is to make a catalog item and make it available for an end user to consume. All right. So let's log back into um, ICF as admin. So a couple of other items under uh, the policies tab is your concept of VDCs or virtual data centers. The idea behind virtual data centers is that it's actually a container of policies. So when you migrate a VM to Amazon or Azure or your public cloud, how should that VM get spun up? What with the compute policy? What would the network policy? Right? What VLANs do you want to extend to the public cloud? And when you migrate that VM back, this also describes the VDC concept also describes what is the destination going to look like? So which vCenter server or which VMware cluster, which port group, what storage, etc. And you saw that when I moved that VM back, uh, it gave me those options. So here I have two VDCs created, two virtual data centers created. As you can see, there is a, a VDC for AWS and a VDC for my VMware data center which is my private cloud so I've created just two one for public one for private so I'll open one up to show you a little bit in more detail so if I click on this and click edit it shows up a couple of things 
So there is a system policy, there is a network policy. I'll show you what the network policy really is. So if I click on policies, I can sh look at my network policy. Here I have two sets of policies really. One is for the network elements that I would create on the public cloud or inner cloud and the network elements that put, I would create when the VM moves back or on my private cloud. So on the public cloud, I have created two policies, one for app and one for web. And this is basically very, very simple definition of the port group as well as the VLANs, etc. So here I have in this configuration, I'm going to create a NIC called app and on this NIC, I will have a port group that I've already picked here called app and then there is a static IP pool called app pool which is where I pull my IP addresses. So that's basically the configuration on the network side. Same thing happens on the VMware side as well. The administration tasks are pretty straightforward. Obviously, you know, this allows you to create users and groups and the definition of users and group in intercloud is tied to multi-tenancy. So if I want to add a new tenant, I would click on add new group. So I'm going to create a Pepsi tenant here. And once you create the group, you will add a user. And when you add a user, you have the ability to pick a service end user, which is a regular user that consumes or I can create a group admin which has access to our cloud admin privileges to this particular group here. So I'm going to call it uh, Pepsi and uh, password. So this is all it takes for me to create a tenant and a, and a user associated to that tenant. If I go back to my, my VDCs here, now I'm going to see that there is a new group created as Pepsi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out and log back in as my Coke user and take a look at what is going on with our request. So we had requested a VM to migrate back and let's see what was the status of the VM. So if you recall we created a VM called VM10 on the public cloud uh, and now I can look at my VMs here and uh, right here this VM has been migrated to my private cloud. As you can see VM10 got shut off on Amazon and it has been migrated to my private cloud and if I click on VNX and refresh I should be seeing that right there so this the same VM that was sitting on public cloud is now migrated to my private cloud and to prove that point I'm gonna log back into my host here if you remember I had pinged that IP address that's the same machine and I'm gonna SSH here again to this and I'll show you the difference here now this time if I do a if config and pipe it to more, what you will see is that there is only two interfaces, each zero and loopback. The, the third interface, the Amazon interface is gone. So that the agent gets removed when we migrate the VM back. Well, thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.